All right, all right. So this week on Dave and Becky Live, we are talking about. It's our Friday Night Live. I don't Friday know if Night Live. Knew that, but it's. F N L. Ooh. We could come up with a fun algorithm for that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Or uh, acronym. Yeah, F N L. Yeah. Funnel. Nice. Okay. So this week we are talking about first. We are going to talk about the kitchen. Kids in the kitchen. Right. Briefly. Yeah. Because we've been talking about, you know, different things with regard to parenting and children and authority and all of those kinds of things. And we got some great um, feedback last week. Mm -hmm. And so this week we're talking about kids in your kitchen and just different things you can do to incorporate and encourage your children to be in the kitchen and help prepare food and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also we're going to spend the majority of our time talking just about um, like healthy eating as a family. Tips from the Dows when it comes to eating. Yeah. Kind of our rules of thumb are generally generalizations of how we try and eat. Yeah. Yeah. So first and foremost, like talking about kids in the kitchen and getting your children involved in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um, So obviously there's some safety things that, you know, you want to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, At different ages, they're going to be ready for, you know, chopping or cutting or different things like that. Um, But one of the best ways that we have found to get our children involved in meal prep and prepping food and all of that kind of stuff is to have meals that they actually really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So of course, working towards something that you actually are going to get to enjoy later is it has a feeling of satisfaction and gives your children a sense of satisfaction. And so Mm -hmm. when they're able to help prepare that thing, then they're like, oh my goodness. So they're going to be learning math facts because if you're, you know, doing a baking recipe, you're going to be using fractions and different types, different types of things like that. Um, you know, you're potentially going to be measuring ounces or different things like that. So incredible, incredible ways to help get your children involved in the kitchen. Now, what's the first thing we normally have our kids cook? <laughs> Fail. So I, I just remember, you know, we had Maggie one time do do a Facebook live thing. We'd watch some cooking shows and they were silly. And, and so she's all like, I want to do one of those. Well, Maggie, what do you know how to cook? I can do eggs. So she started out with, hi, I'm Maggie and this is my cooking show. Yes. You know, jokingly. But, but anyhow, eggs eggs is one, one of the ones that, that kids can start out with. They crack the egg, you put it in there. Teach them how to flip it or scramble it or whatever. You teach them how to tell if it's done, and and that's pretty much all there is to it. So when it comes to eggs, but kind of start to finish, they can they can do a lot of that by themselves. Yes. And then they graduate to you know cutting things up, uh, vegetables. You know if uh, you know when when you're eating lots of vegetables and stuff, um, which which we will get into a little bit later. But you know you know this is the way we cut these ones, and we got this fancy way of cutting the the peppers and the onions and and all that type of stuff. Yes. Um, Well, and eggs is a great one because they learn some technique for cracking eggs, which can be helpful later in life or in life in general. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a very easy, quick, relatively quick, also Mm. very healthy meal that they can prepare. So making scrambled eggs is very easy. Um, Teaches them about using the oven and pans and... and or stovetop. Mm-hmm. Stovetop. There you go. And you Range. can... Range. Right. And then you could do potentially a whole thing on different ways eggs are cooked and have them test out soft-boiled eggs, hard-boiled eggs, you poached. know, poached eggs. Yeah. All different ways, you know, over medium, scram- or over easy, over hard, scrambled, all the different ways. Um, and then if you wanted to do something really fun... You could get turkey eggs and duck eggs and quail <laughs> eggs and chicken eggs and taste them all and see how they all taste different. But these are just ways that you can, you know, if your child is like, hey, I'm curious about this, they have a curiosity, mm-hmm. f- 
feed that or encourage that and have them, you know, kind of explore that area a little bit more. So do we want to transition to healthy eating or do we mm -hmm. have more? No, I think tips? that's good. That's good. Well, we can work in some of the tips as we as we go. Yeah. So, yeah, because we want to just kind of go through uh, Dow's rules of thumb when it comes to, to eating um, healthy. And we know that everybody is starting at, at different spots. You know, for us, you know, a, a crazy meal might be, you know, having pizza, whereas other people, it's all like, well, it's cake and ice cream is going overboard for us, you know, whatever it might be. So, so anyhow, we're just kind of giving rules of thumb. Um, with us, it's been, uh, gosh, it's been like five years, 10 years that we've really been kind of developing how, how we as a family eat. And mm -hmm. so, um, but, but we do know that, that it, it does need to be something in your brain that's permanent. So I know there's people out there. It's all like, oh, you know, hey, you're looking good. Oh yeah, well I'm doing, I'm doing Nutra Watchers again, and do 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 do, you know. And it's all like, again, well yeah yeah yeah. Well I lost all this weight, then I gained it all back. Well okay, so so anyhow, um, so without using any of the the fancy stuff there, this is this is we're kind of getting into um, Dow's rules of thumb for eating well. Yeah, and just really like what you said about having it kind of solidified in your mind. So this is, you know, a lifestyle change that we're talking about. This is not like you mentioned, Nutra Watchers, Nutra System, Weight Watchers, those type of things. This is a... Well, we don't want to be dogging on some of them. Oh. So, yeah, that's why we use fake names. Leap. <laughs> Um, but anyways, so this is, we're actually talking about steps that you would take to help yourself shift to a healthier lifestyle, a healthier way of eating mm -hmm. instead of just something that you're shifting to for a short time and then shifting back yeah. to a more unhealthy way of eating. Yep, yep. Yeah, because we know like, you know, there's a lot of people out there. It's all like, well, I don't feel good looking in the mirror. Um and and so they want to lose weight and and so it it but it does need to be you know kind of one of those things that that we we stick with and and don't just uh, set off to the side once we've reached our goals and then lose all those goals yeah so so our our first main thing that 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 we eat is food with i can't read it either. oh so so yeah so so when you shop and and again these are Dow's kind of kind of when we go shopping when we think about meals this is this is what we look for um, when we go to buy food we we want to make sure there's no ingredients label on it yeah so that that's really what we're looking at so this is your your fruits your vegetables um, meats for the most part as well if it's got an ingredients label on there we we use those as sparingly as possible uh, we're not perfect we're not pretending anybody is sometimes we do use uh, things with ingredients labels um, but but as a general rule like our, our go-to stuff is is what can we make from these items that have no ingredients listed so yeah. um, I know there's a big push to uh, away from uh, prepared food yep. or processed processed, processed food. food yeah that's that's what we want to stick away from so so stick to the vegetable aisle and stick to the meat counter and and that's that's kind of where where home base needs to be yeah well and of course <laughs> this is all you know prefaced by um not every thing is going to work for everybody for every season and mm -hmm. so like there have been seasons um, where we have eaten less red meat or less meat in general and just stuck more to like fruits and vegetables, um, those types of things. And of course, like Dave mentioned, you know, we do shoot for whole foods. Mm -hmm. and, and when I say that, that means that in the form that you purchase it in is the form that God created it to grow in. So, I mean, obviously your steak is going to be off the cow unless you're a butcher. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> your fruits, your vegetables, all of those other things are going to be in the actual form that they grew into. And so that helps eliminate the majority of the processing. The other thing that we, you know, can touch on because a lot of our focus is fruits and vegetables and those types of things is the clean 15 or the dirty dozen lists. Oh, yep. And so those are um, 
30 dozen is vegetables or fruits that are highly sprayed with pesticides and chemicals, chemically mm. treated. Um, and then the clean 15 are ones that are minimally or not yeah. treated. So the dirty dozen, you can look that up. I know uh, celery is one of the ones on there. And, and if you do need something off that list, if it's available to you, uh, get, get the organic version of that, like celery. We normally, if it's available, we, you know, we live in small town, Iowa, so we, we, you know, we can't go to Winco and just pick up or all kinds Aldi's of stuff or, or all, Whole Foods or, oh yeah, well, all these is out here, but yeah, there ain't no it's Winco. A, it's a minute though. We've got so, <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes. Yep. So, uh, so yeah. So if you do look up Dirty Dozen list, go for the organic if you need that, and it's available. <laughs> so um, some of the things. Can I do a quick disclaimer on organic and non-GMO? Okay. So, because just so you guys know, non-GMO. If something is labeled non-GMO, that means it has not been genetically modified. Mm -hmm. um, if something is certified organic by the government. Mm -hmm. The government is the one who says what sprays or pesticides or chemicals are considered organic. Yep. So when you're buying organic, you're still paying for or purchasing what the government has deemed safe according to their organic label. Um, we're going to need another plug in. Um, so just so that you guys know, if you can actually find a farmer nearby, we had a friend who did this in Washington, who does no spray crops. So when they weed, you know, they don't spray chemicals to kill the weeds in between the rows of lettuce. They actually pick the weeds out mm -hmm. or have an implement that they use. So there's no chemicals used on right. those, on that produce. So my little disclaimer. Yeah. Organic yep. isn't always it, all it's it, cracked up. Yeah, to. it isn't. A uh, great place to purchase some of these also is Azure Standard. It's a company based yes. out of Oregon. And uh, you can, if you get a drop site near you, or you can have them UPS stuff to you as well. Um, some of the things that we commonly do, um, like with our veggies, we will um, steam them. Uh, or roast them. So mm -hmm. we so we steam them. We put in you know garlic and any that type of stuff that you want in it, and then you steam it. We use an instapot um, is one of our main go tos there. And then the other thing that we'll do is we just put it on like a cookie sheet or something like that. You just cut up a bunch. We'll do carrots and mushrooms and what are some other I mean, ones? Peppers, radishes. Yeah, sweet whatever. potatoes. What whatever you want in there. And radishes, by the way, after you cook them, they do lose the bite. So just FYI. Yeah. If, uh, if, you, if you don't like raw radishes, give the cooked ones a try. You might actually like it. And then, yeah, so we'll put in all that. Now, anything that you like normally put on meat, try on those roasted veggies. Mm. They're actually pretty good. Like if you got a chicken rub that you really like, try that on the veggies, you know, sprinkle it over the top. And then when you put it in there with a little olive oil or something like that, and then you roast them for, well, you put them in the oven for like 350 for like uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah. Until the carrots are soft. Right. Right. And so not crunchy anymore. Yep. Side note, we mix a lot of our own rubs or spices or seasoning mixes mm -hmm. um, because the majority of your um, rubs or seasoning mixes that come pre-mixed at the store have a little ingredient I like to call MSG mm -hmm. um, in it and a lot of anti-caking ingredients. And so if you're trying to switch to a more healthy lifestyle, um, shifting away from some of those and finding some homemade like taco seasoning that we do um just will help you even be more healthy yeah yeah so anyhow so that that's kind of that with the meats it's the same way you know if, if you got something that you like you know you and and the rubs and stuff start start looking up online hey what what can i use instead of the store-bought stuff yep. and then you go and buy it in bulk and we just mix our own um but we used to go to winco a bunch because they had uh they had the the big bulk area there and we would just you know, we got a family of seven yep. so uh so we, we bought pretty much everything in bulk and there in cash and carry was our main places but yeah you just put the bag under it and let it fill all the way up mm -hmm. and it's fairly inexpensive to, to buy it in bulk that way yeah and you can buy in bulk um on azure standard mm -hmm. and then frontier is also another oh. place for really high quality spices too 
Okay. Yeah, so that was our main number one thing is that as much as you can switch to eating whole foods. And I know we're not the first people out there to even talk about this, but we do know that it's difficult to really get into it because like, how do I even start? Well, just cut up a bunch of veggies and put them on a cookie sheet put some stuff sprinkle some stuff over the top and there you go or you can do like a teriyaki um fry what is that stir fry like a stir fry yeah. type thing that's a really good way to kind of work your way into it um let's see here our next one was um when you're eating um meats and star starches do not mix very well in your stomach so we're just gonna throw this one out there as well so for meats, your stomach needs a lot of acid to break down those animal proteins. Yep. Um, now with your starches, potatoes and rice type, um, it actually uses the opposite. It uses alkaline. So, so when you eat meat and potatoes together at the same time, they're mixed in your stomach, the stomach acids counteract each other and none of it gets digested. It just kind of gets nasty and then it goes out so um so that's just a, another tip there so whole foods meats and starches we we recommend not eating those at the same time which uh so anyhow yeah and this you know just like anything this this is something that you need to decide to do mm -hmm. and then you need to stick to um and what you've committed to yourself to do. Yep, yep. And we'll talk about like, you know, days for cheating and that type of stuff so that way you have some leeway. Um, but that, you know, if you're at grandma's house and she's got the 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 pot roast, roast, the pot roast, roast going on, and it's got the meat and potatoes in there, don't don't freak out, you know, you can kind of well, you do what you do. Hey, Jesse. But oh, there we go. There <laughs> we go. Uh meat and starches number 4. Oh. Also, Yes, probiotics for sure. Yep. So the type of food that like our grandparents ate is different than what we see in the stores now. Um, and part of it, <laughs> part of it is just, you know, the, the way that the, um, the food is now being processed and the, the soil is not as nutrient dense as it used to be yep. based on farming practices and stuff. Um, so so we, we found that probiotics are a huge part of of what we do uh daily yes and the kind of probiotic that you take matters mm -hmm. um and so we've been taking probiotics for years um we had taken a refrigerated probiotic actually that was recommended by our naturopath for a very long time um, and then as we did more research um we found out that when you take that probiotic and it hits the the heat of your stomach um, that kills a large portion of the beneficial bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then also the stomach acid kills yeah. pretty much the remaining portion. Um, so for people to see a significant response on a refrigerated probiotic like that is pretty minimal. So. Um, so finding a probiotic that actually releases at the top of your gut, so when it hits your gut pH, is what you want to look for. So mm -hmm. something that's freeze dried, um, that has good strains and that is micro encapsulated so that it opens when it hits the pH of your gut. So if you want more, if you yep. have any questions about any of this, ask us, message us, put in the comments, yep. um, questions, because we, we have recipes, tons of different ideas. Yeah, yeah, we got recipes if you're really wanting to get on board with this. We got uh, a great probiotic that we use. If you want a recommendation, we'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, just, just reach out there. So, which brings us now to, um, so some people, this, this is a whole lot to, to go all in on. And so you, you do want to kind of start slow. Yes. Well, and like Dave said, this is a journey that we have been on for years, mm -hmm. like probably five, 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. So we have not made the switch from like eating boxed pasta and all of that kind of stuff to where we are now. Yep overnight so give yourself grace mm -hmm. and it will take time um jesse's like how long of a commitment mm. the rest of your life is a good amount of time pretty much pretty much <laughs> uh... it's never too early to start eating healthy right that's right that's right um so another thing well uh, so we were going to talk into you know how often do you want to do this? Starting out, just just start trying out new recipes. Find ones that you like. That's kind yeah. of the way we did it. And then earn a big shift from maybe how you currently eat. Right. 
So if you're, you know, if you say you want to like minimize the sugar in your diet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are some good options. So obviously honey is a great option mm -hmm. because you can get raw locally sourced honey from a local beekeeper fairly easily, or you can get your own beehives. Yes. Um, another good, good low glycemic load um, sweetener is monk fruit. So that, when I say glycemic load, it won't um, spike your blood sugar or cause mm -hmm. a significant spike in your blood sugar. So monk fruit is another great one. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of really terrible sweeteners out there. So like sucralose is really terrible for you. Um, if you can get stevia, some people are crazy, not crazy about the taste of stevia, mm -hmm. but if you can tolerate stevia and the flavor of it and that kind of thing, stevia is actually a, a herb that you can grow in your garden that if you can find a source of stevia that's minimally processed. Yep. So just change out things little bits at a time. Yep. Don't go cowboy on it. Don't go cowboy on it. That's Dave's yep. thing. That's mine. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so basically like with us, <clears throat> Normally on uh, one of the weekend nights, you know, Fridays or Sundays, we do, you know, we do movie and and something that we normally don't eat. So that's so we kind of have a, a cheating time. Some people do movie and pizza with popcorn or whatever it might be. We used to do pizza. We used to do pizza. Now we just do tacos, Taco Tuesdays. So, um, but, you know, and then we normally three times a month, we'll go out to eat somewhere and that's a cheating evening for us. We just eat whatever the restaurant has. Now, when it comes to these, now when it comes to some of these things, like let's say you're going out to Mexican restaurant and you know, and, and you have like three different meals that, that you want to choose from, yeah. you know, choose the one that you think is going to have the most whole foods on it. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people there, uh, they struggle with the, uh, the wheat. What is that? Gluten. The gluten. Yeah. So which which of those? So I like the um, what's my favorite one? Which kind of? Fis uh, oh my gosh. Oh, fajitas. Fajitas. Yeah, and and you can eat those just with a fork or whatever without having to to have the roll ups if you want. So um, so anyhow that but that there's some some options there. Chris <laughs> Christmas cowboys in Washington, man. Well, at least on your side of the mountains, on the other side of the mountains, that you got some actual really cowboys. Yeah. I don't know. There's Jesse. probably a couple. Um, yeah. So, so, and, and it's okay. I mean, if something special is coming up, it, it's yeah. okay to, you know, just eat whatever's at the potluck. Um, what I normally do too is I'm go, okay, so I'm, I'm going to be at a potluck. I know these types of things are going to be there. Just say it's Thanksgiving. And, yeah. and so, you know, it's, so I'll say no to the bread roll. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, when it's time for the brownies, then I'll have my gluten then. And so you can kind of, you know, pick and choose. Don't go cowboy on it now and, and go all the way off the, uh, off the deep end with it. Yeah. But, but, you know, just try and minimize it as, as best as you can. Again, we're, we're human. We're just giving you kind of our, our tips and, yeah. and things that we share with our kids as well. Yeah. Um, when it comes to meals, uh, you got to give your... Lunch should be, I know everybody says breakfast is the most important meal. It's lunch. So, and, and here's why. You're fine. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Here's why. Because um, what happens when you wake up, your digestive system is also waking up. So yeah. uh, a light, solid, you know, breakfast, you know, you know, we're not fat. You don't have to fast um, or just you know, eat water or whatever, ice chips, but, you know, have a light breakfast and then mm -hmm. lunch needs to be your biggest meal of the day because that's a time when your digestive system is at its peak. <laughs> so, so that's your biggest meal of the day. And I know with working families and all that type of stuff, that's really difficult to do. It's going to mess Sorry. it up. I know. Um, so, uh, and then, and then for supper, same thing, make, make that a lighter meal, which I know we struggle with here. <laughs> Sorry, got to charge the phone. Oh, that's going to totally mess it up. Here, you want to put it in this one? <laughs> we can just, let's just switch it. Let me just switch it. All right, okay. switching. There we go. Had to charge the phone. All right, so we're on Instagram and Facebook, and, and YouTube. YouTube is here, and I don't know what these two are. They're yours. This one needs to be plugged in. Yeah. Okay. So make sure it's pointing at our faces again. It, it's at our faces. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so anyhow, lunch needs to be be the biggest meal of the day, which can be tricky, you know, because most of us are at work, and, and so that, that tends to be a, a little bit difficult. I do a lot of leftovers as much as possible just from the night before, you know, whatever those roasted veggies that, that we had, you know, or the, the steak or the meat or whatever, that comes with lunch as well. You know, we want to be staying away from fast food as much as possible. Now, if, mm-hmm. you, if you have committed to one day a week, I'm going to eat just the good stuff, and then the other four days or five days of the week, um, I'm going to eat just whatever I want because I'm working myself into it. Um, well, and if you start, like when you start, if you start with one day a week or, mm-hmm. you know, even if you just shift what you're eating for. Supper. Yeah. Supper. One meal of the, yeah. of the week. Um, just ease yourself into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, another tip that that we're, we're it's kind of new for the Dallas. Cause again, we're still learning and, and doing uh, doing doing our. We're our still portion. shifting things ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Um, staging your meals, and mm-hmm. so what I mean by that is don't mix it all together and eat it all at once. So, because um, when it hits your stomach, you you know you you chew it up, and then as it goes down, you the, your tongue sends, you know information to your brain saying this is what's coming down and so the this is how we're going to have to digest it so normally you start with your raw veggies first if you're going to eat any of those then your cooked veggies go second yeah and then either your your heavy things so either your your potatoes and rice goes last or your meats so if you want to do it that way because they take the longest to actually digest yeah. And so you actually, you don't, you don't want to put those in first and then it stops up everything else. And then all that fresh veggies that you ate after the meat doesn't quite get digested. If you catch my drift, it just gets warm and <clears throat> wilty. Yeah. So thinking about like, this is really thinking very logically about how food is going to ba- break down in your digestive system. And so the raw vegetables that you eat are going to break down the easiest and the soonest Mm -hmm. um and then you know cooked veggies like dave said and then the meat or well the the cooked veggies actually break down easiest but you want the raw veggies going through first because if not they will putrefy faster they will yeah so yeah Anyways, but, so, but that that's, again, the kind of what we're working with, which is kind of opposite from kind of what we did. Because, like, you know, when my kids were younger, um, we'd be at the, you know, at the family meal and they'd be stocking up on the, the fruit salad. And so we always made them eat that last As because, like dessert. yeah, kind of dessert-ish, you know, because we were good parents. And uh, and so now it's, I watch my kids do that. It's so all like, actually, dude, I was wrong. You should be eating those first. <laughs> And then the steak and potatoes, you know, steak or potatoes at the end. But the nice thing is, is it gives us an opportunity to say to our kids, like, we're still learning, Mm -hmm. you know, we're not perfect. We don't expect you guys to be perfect. This is what we now, this is the information that we now know. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. So a couple more things and then we'll wrap it up. Um, uh, talking about bread, you know, we kind of touched on gluten uh, for the most part, not the greatest for you. We know that uh, most people that have researched, you know, healthy stuff, we want to stick away from breads um, or the, the, the wheat and all that stuff because of how GMO they've been. Yeah. Um, however, in Europe, they they outlawed a lot of those GMO wheat. Mm-hmm. And so so we actually know know people that when they go to Europe, they can eat all the bread they want, no problem. Yeah, it's so fresh. Yep, they they come back to the United States and they their gluten intolerance flares back up again. Yep. So not all bread is created equal and all that stuff. So um, so that's just something to to, to think about there as well. Um, I added something to the list: juicing. Yeah, so juicing's a big one that that's been out there. And uh, we have even talked about juicing. Yeah, and and we love juicing. It tastes great and all that stuff. A couple of issues with juicing though is uh you know you put it in the blender and and it will chew up a lot of the uh the fibers that are in there um so that that's kind of a not great piece to juicing Mm -hmm. uh the other thing too is when you're chewing something you make more saliva and that gets mixed in Mm -hmm. to the the fruits and veggies that you're drinking now um or would have been drinking but if you're chewing them up you get more saliva in there and so it helps helps. break it helps your stomach digest it yeah um Yes. Well, and and the thing that's crazy is 
um, you think about juicing and getting all of those nutrients and all of that kind of stuff. And it all, like every time we kind of learn another thing, I kind of think about the way God created mm -hmm. the, these foods for us to consume and to keep us healthy and all of this kind of stuff. Um, like it's the best form. Like mm -hmm. if you're going to drink milk, drinking raw milk is the best form. Mm -hmm. Not know, cooked. Right. Not AKA pasteurized. pasteurized. Not if, you, if you didn't know that pasteurized means cooked. Pasteurization, yes. It, it means it's been cooked. Just yeah. if you didn't know. Yeah. And so, you know, just like kind of teaching our children to really recognize the more, the form that God created it in, you know, is the best form to consume it in. Mm -hmm. Dave's reading all of Jesse's comments. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot less glare now, now that we switched the, uh, that one Besides. over there. Besides. Yeah. I noticed that from before. We got to do something about our light. Um, yeah. So... Do, 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 do. Uh, the other thing with juicing too that we talked about earlier was um, when, when when your tongue tastes stuff, it lets your brain know what you're eating. When yeah. you're just drinking it straight down, your 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 stomach has no idea what what's in it now or what quantity is in there. Yeah. Because we're just kind of drinking it down super fast. Yeah. Now I can see a uh, like an argument for well, if I just sip it, swish it around my mouth, so that way I get some saliva. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. If, you, if you're really gonna juice, I, I that's the way I would go with it. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow. That's uh, that's that. Uh, last part would be, you know, if you want to do your own research, um, one mm. one guy we really liked, uh, Mark Hyman, H Y M A N. Yeah. Doctor Mark Hyman. Yep. Uh, his book called Food. It's just called Food, and it's got a lot of great rules of thumb. It's th the information that we got is not just from him. There's been yeah. some other some other sources that we have. Um, Moritz. Moritz. Yeah. Moritz. M O R I T Z. There's another guy that we really like too. Uh, set, put us a comment if you want to know who it is or message us. Um, I know if I say it, um, one, I'll butcher the name, and two, if you Google him, you only see hate mail on it. So use Brave um, or DuckDuckGo if you actually want to read about what he has to say. Um, but yeah, ask, ask, ask us on a comment. We can um, bring that up there as well. So that's, that's Dow's rules. Rules of thumb for healthy eating. Right, whole foods, stack your meals. Feel yeah. free, feel free to have a cheating time. It's okay. Well, and the other thing we are going to talk super quickly, um, before the battery goes out. <laughs> um, Jesse's hilarious. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> he's totally derailing me. I can't read the comments. Um, so quick tip on cheating like cheat meals or whatever you call it um you can set yourself up for success and still like enjoy life or live your life um so one thing that we were going to say super quickly if you're having a cheat day every uh, every day that ends in <laughs> y or whatever that's you haven't made a real shift yeah. um so you're just saying oh this is just a cheat day but yeah um so Deciding ahead of time mm -hmm. how you can give yourself an out in terms of um, mm. helping yourself choose a healthier lifestyle, um, but, you know, stick to what you've committed to. So say a friend calls and asks you to go out for coffee. So having a um, alternative that you can do, so either suggest a lunch place that you know is healthier where you could order something healthy like a salad or something mm -hmm. like that um or go out for coffee but skip the scone mm -hmm. or the muffin or the cinnamon roll or whatever it is and then also have tea maybe tea with honey or something else because a lot the, of times the latte's got a bunch of sugar in yeah, it. yeah when you have a latte that's or the other a, thing we didn't talk about no no more sugar sorry yeah sugars sugars are really bad deal and so that's why I kind of offered some alternatives to sugar because that's a way that we have mm -hmm. chosen to go with our family um, so if you're gonna go out for coffee with a friend do that because of course we want you to have connection and relationships and all that stuff but choose tea or a, a drink that has not that artificial sweetener in it or the sugar in it that type of thing mm -hmm. um, and then also 
what was the other thing? I had to like set yourself up for success things. I don't remember. I said it too earlier. <laughs> um, so anyways, but yeah, just being intentional with, um, you know, when some of those opportunities arise, how can you help yourself stay successful with, you know, shifting your lifestyle, lifestyle to um, something healthier? Mm. Um, and also, like, our kids will often, will go to the um, coffee shop and they'll want a smoothie, but they'll say, okay, well, can I see the ingredients label for what you put in your fruit smoothies? Because they're mm. not always all fruit. Mm. So. Yep, yep, yep some tips so yep as usual if you got comments please put them in the comment area let us know reach out if you want more information on uh something or another um if you like these uh dnls f yeah i don't know dnf i thought it was friday Friday night Night life Life. fnl there we go i forgot our acronym already um yeah and and you have something else that you want to ask about that you wouldn't mind uh hearing us yammer on for 20 to 35 minutes about um feel free to to, no, to no, reach no. out drop drop it in a in a comment yeah. or whatever questions in the comments message us anything like that um yep, we're yep. happy to share recipes or any info we have so all right all right okay. thanks for watching and god bless thanks for hanging out guys <laughs>